Welcome back to the Jen and Julian podcast. Welcome back. Do you have to sneeze? I don't know, do you? Do you have to sneeze? I don't know, do you? The question of of the day is do I have to sneeze? I don't know, do you? Marble, keep it on. Oh, my ball, protect. The aliens are going to win. Protect my ball. Good boy. We got our tinfoil hats on, y'all. Literally. Marble, he's got his on. Bunny's got hers on. No, Peachy and Kermit no, have theirs don't. on. Just they Bob. all have tinfoil hats no, on. No, just Bobby does. Just Bobby. <sighs> Do you need a, a tinfoil hat? Do you not have tinfoil? Well, Postmates some. Go to Julian. the App Store, <laughs> download Postmates. Use code Jen and Julian for $110 of free delivery credits in your first seven days. It is an awesome delivery app. Could you could you leave it on? We need protection here. Check it out. Also, guys, get yourself some MeUndies, the softest underwear you can buy. Three times softer than cotton. Right now, you get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to meundies.com slash Jenna Julian or click the link down below. Me Undies makes everything great and soft and comfortable, so do it. Check it out. Thank you, sponsors. Jenna, what are we doing today? Um. Well, so I know you guys are excited we're wearing tinfoil hats, but they're not like conspiracy theories or anything like that. It's I've been watching this show you know, like I do, called NASA's Unexplained Files. Oh, and wow. I've been having a great time because um, it's just, he doesn't want to wear that. Babe, okay, I'll just put it next to him. Yeah, there you go. Good boy. Um, I just am fascinated by everything that I am not currently aware of, right? Yeah. And uh, I just was watching that show and at, you know, three in the morning or whenever I watch it. And just taking notes of the things that I like and a couple of things that weren't on that show that I like. Okay. And uh, we're only wearing tinfoil hats just because fun. Right? Sometimes you just got to put some tinfoil on your head <laughs> while you podcast. Oh, but it's a good time. I don't know. I just am really enjoying myself. Yeah, you are. Thank you. Let's do it. I'm ready to hear what you got. You want to know some stuff? I want to know some stuff. I like stuff. I like stuff too. Yeah. Like when you learn something that you didn't know before, that's mm-hmm. my favorite feeling. Yeah, hell yeah. All right, are you ready, Julian? I'm, I'm fucking ready, dude. Marple, are you ready? Oh my God, he's so ready. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out. Is this affecting the way I think, you think? I don't know. We also drank energy drinks earlier. I so feel, feel kind of crazy. crazy. What, what, do you know the name of that brand of energy drink? No. How many milligrams of like caffeine is in there? Yes. Okay. All right. Julian. Yeah, go. I'm good. I had tequila last night and energy drink today, and we lost an hour to daylight savings. What is happening? <laughs> it seems like a good day to wear tinfoil hats <laughs> and do this type of podcast. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready. All right. So the first thing that I learned on- What? Julian. <laughs> sorry. 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 <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. The first thing that I learned on this show was the possibility or the idea or the theory, Julian. Okay. Of the sun, our sun, we love him. He's great. He's a good guy. Julian, yeah. Pay attention. I'm looking for him. Got to make a layup. Pay attention, oh, Grace. Grace. <laughs> oh, Grace. The sun having an evil twin. Do you know what they call this evil twin? Stop <laughs> laughing. I'm sorry. Or I'm gonna I'm rip that tinfoil hat off your head. Stop laughing. Imagine them in a family reunion beefing with each other. <laughs> Do you know what they call it? No. Nemesis. They call it Nemesis? They call it Nemesis. Like they refer to it as the sun's Nemesis or that's its name? Nemesis. Oh. Are you ready? Okay. This is from directly from NASA's Unexplained Files of the show. Um, roughly half of the stars you see. Stop doing that. I'm, I'm focusing. <laughs> I'm... <laughs> roughly half of the stars you see in the night sky, Julian are called binary stars. They have companion stars with them. They orbit with each other. Yeah. We are relatively unusual in that we can only see one sun and only have one sun that's ours. Yeah. We all go like this around and Uh it's ours. Uh, There's a couple of scientific teams that have evidence that there is something big lurking on the outside of our solar system, Julian. It looks like... Every 26 million years or so, give or take, there's a big major extinction on Earth suggesting a pattern or that it happens periodically. And it suggests that maybe there's an astronomical cause for it. 
So what's something that could cause something like that every 26 million years? On the dot. Uh, well, yeah, kind of on the dot. Yeah. Theoretically, a second star's massive gra- gravitational pull could be slinging stuff towards the Earth every 26 million years. But it has to be massive. Okay. Maybe there's something giant lurking on the outside of our universe. And maybe, maybe, Julian, it's a giant sun called Nemesis. But the reason you can't see it is because it's infrared light. It's infrared light? Infrared light. Oh, my God. Yeah. So it's there. Mm-hmm. So if you have an infrared camera. Maybe you could see it. Could you see it? Yeah, you know, um, I was sort of not really paying attention when they went over the infrared uh, satellite part, but <laughs> basically you can't see it with the eyes, and okay. you can't see it with the telescope. Okay. But it could be there. It could be there. It could be there. Okay. Okay. See, now I have a question. Um, I don't know if I have an answer, but well, go for it. You Imagine you had like an infrared scope or something. Yeah. Could you look through the scope into a telescope and would that turn the telescope into an infrared telescope? You know, I don't know. And I'm pretty sure that they have plenty of things that can see in infrared light, but... But what if this is just otherworldly infrared light? It's just different. Like we don't have the tech to see it. Yeah. Huh. Is it as big as the sun? Maybe. Or bigger. As thick. Or smaller or thicker or less thick. Do they... Hmm. Is it hot? I don't know. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I got... I'm down. <laughs> yeah, I'm on board. Here. Look it. Nemesis star theory is what it's called. I mean, I have a tinfoil hat on, but it's it's fun. Is it not? No, it's fun. Yeah. Right? Okay. Um... Here's from space.com. Okay. That sounds I don't legit. know if that's a reputable place. But <laughs> <laughs> sounds, sounds super legit. Half the, half the websites that I pulled some of this stuff from have like, you know, things that sound like that, but I'm not sure if it's like a reputable source at all whatsoever. Cause someone just be like, I like science. <laughs> Dot com. Can you buy stars on space.com? I don't know. Julian. Okay. Nemesis is a theoretical dwarf star. Oh, okay. A dwarf star. So it'd be dead. Right. Isn't that what a dwarf star is? Is it? Uh, uh-huh. Oh, checkspace.com. Some of these things, Julian, I'm telling I'm like literally too dumb to explain them to you. That's fine. I'm okay. too dumb to have them be explained to me. So we're a good team there. <laughs> Nemesis is a theoretical dwarf star thought to be a companion to our sun. The theory was postulated to explain a perceived cycle of mass extinctions in Earth's history. Scientists speculated that such a star could affect the orbit of objects in our far outer solar system, sending them on a collision course with Earth. While recent astronomical surveys failed to find any evidence that such a star exists, a 2017 study suggests there could be a nemesis in the very ancient past. Oh Here's God. the argument for nemesis. Okay. In the early 1980s, scientists noticed that extinctions seemed to follow a cyclical pattern every 27 million years or so. Uh, in 1984, Richard Muller of the University of California, Berkeley, suggests that a red dwarf star 1.5 light years away could be the cause of mass extinctions. And that it's a white dwarf, low mass star, only a few times as massive as Jupiter, and would cast dim light, making it difficult to spot. So we don't know where he is. Wow. We don't know where Nemesis is. He'd be is. lurking, then. He'd be lurking. What the hell? Scientists speculated that the Nemesis uh, that Nemesis may affect the Oort cloud, which is made up of icy rocks surrounding the sun beyond the range of Pluto. Many of these chunks travel around the sun in a long-term elliptical orbit. As they draw closer to the star, their ice begins to melt and stream behind them, making them recognizable as comets. If Nemesis traveled through the Oort cloud every 27 million years, some argue it could kick extra comets out of the sphere and send them hurling towards the inner solar system and Earth. Impact rates would increase and mass extinctions would be more common. So in in the event, like, say the 26 million year timer was up today, right? Yep. Would we, would we, would the earth be like shaking? Would it be like such a massive impact to where we actually like saw things flying and then felt it and like, or what would it just be sort of like slow and gradual? Well, Julian, a mass extinction implies that something so big, so bad happens that we, by the time it happens, we probably, we're all dead. Yeah. We just, bye bye. But can we watch it? I don't think so, babe. So mass extinction, like just poof. 
then every, everything's gone. Well, I don't think it's exactly like poof. It's more like bang. But yeah. Bang energy. <laughs> it's just a giant bang energy can that flies towards Earth <laughs> with the guy's face on it. And it's just bang, 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 bang. And then everyone's dead. Oh, God. Okay. Um, this ties into my last one. But the, I don't know how to say this word. K-U-I-P-R. P-E-R. Cooper? 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 Cooper, maybe. Cooper? Queeper. 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 That sounds like a word you made up. Queeper. Queeper. It's like creeper, but you know, he's a queeper. Queeper. Okay, stop. Um, the, the the queeper belt. Cooper. Co- let's just call it to be to like simplify things. Let's just call it queeper. <laughs> <laughs> that belt. Okay, that belt. A disk of debris that lies inside the solar system also has a well-defined outer edge. This is super cool. Uh, That could be sheared off by a companion star. Researchers have found other systems where a companion star seems to have affected the shape of the debris disk. So there's basically like, I think it's outside of Neptune. We'll get to this at the end. But there's a, a bunch of debris floating out there. Okay. And then all of a sudden it just fucking ends. Like it just stops. Why? Like, because well, usually, if stuff's like sort of floating through space, yeah, it, you would expect it to sort of be oh, like it hits an invisible wall, kind of done, got it, gone. Okay. So people argue that maybe that there's something huge over here that's causing them to get sucked towards it, which would create a drop off in that space. Got it. That we wouldn't be able to physically see, but it's there. But that's that's the the queep queep queeper. <laughs> I'm saying it normal. <laughs> That's interesting. Mm. Okay, what does this say? It says, The dwarf planet Sedna lends further credence in the eyes of some to the existence of a companion star for the sun. With an orbit of up to 12,000 years, the planet presents a puzzle to many. Scientists suggest that a massive object such as a dim star could be responsible for keeping Sedna so far from the sun. Okay. Okay. I got that. And then we'll talk about Planet Nine. Or should we just talk about Planet Nine now? I want to know about Planet Nine now. Okay. Well, I Hold guess on. they're... What? Okay, I'm good to go. All right, good. Well, here's... here's uh, I guess it says a theory under fire. Though some scientists find the nemesis theory plausible, others do not. The initial cyclical nature of mass extinctions is still under discussion. Studies of craters seem to indicate that such a pattern does not exist. Other studies of fossil records suggest that mass extinctions are more likely to happen around those peaks, though extinction events occur during other uh, time periods. In order to avoid significantly affecting the orbit of planets, as well as to avoid observation, Nemesis must remain at a distance from the sun. But astronomers argue that such an orbit would be inherently unstable traveling so far out nemesis would be affected by other stars moving through the galaxy yeah that was kind of my question is if it's outside of our solar system like how does it stay in orbit or within orbit's range if it's not like within do you know what i mean i'm too dumb to answer that question anyone okay anyways um the resulting orbit would not provide a steady kick to the Oort cloud but would be constantly changing In 2017, a new a new study suggested that nearly all stars, like the Sun, were born with companions. The astronomers did detailed studies of young stars in the Perseus molecular cloud and backed up their work with modeling. But Nemesis, if it did indeed exist at the time, broke free of the Sun early in its history and moved to the rest of the Milky Way Milky Way's population. Got it. Okay, that's an interesting theory. The one that uh, the stars are paired with. like a companion star. You're my binary star. You're my binary star. I'm Nemesis. Okay. You can only see me with infrared light. Cute. Um, here's some more about that. Okay. A solar companion may be hard to find, but it would still be visible by sensitive telescopes. Astronomers have scoured the sky using two micron all sky surveys, two mass, which studied the sky over four years in three infrared wavelengths. The instrument discovered 173 brown dwarfs farther away than our solar system, but none near enough to be the infamous nemesis. My solar don't, companion? Don't tip your tinfoil cap at me. My solar companion? No, 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 no. Okay. 
Let's talk about Planet Nine. Fun? Planet Nine, Planet Ten, no, Planet no, Eleven. No, no, Hold no, on, no. I'm not done. Planet Twelve, Planet Thirteen, Planet Fourteen, Planet Fifteen, Planet Sixteen. <laughs> planet 17, <laughs> planet 18. <laughs> You're just counting planets? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get them organized. Oh. Are they are they organized? They were at one point. I'm trying to get them back into the, okay. the right order. Okay, cool. Okay. This is from a website called sciencefocus.com, which again, <laughs> space.com <laughs> sounds and like it, it, focus. it might be reputable, but we don't know. Yeah. Could just be some guy named Jared over here being like sciencefocus.com. All right. Planet Nine. Could an enormous world be lurking in our midst? Uh. Astronomers, <laughs> sorry. Astronomers are increasingly certain that there is a ninth planet. Stop doing that. I can hear your eyebrows in your tin foil, Julian. <laughs> I love having audible eyebrows. I'm sorry. Audible eyebrows, band name called it. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Astronomers are increasingly certain that there is a ninth planet orbiting the sun, far out beyond Nep- Neptune, a so called planet nine. It wouldn't be the first time. All right, this is some weird stuff. I have an itch. Can you stop? I have an it is itch. so distracting. <laughs> okay. So this is essentially the theory that may- stop. <laughs> 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 that it's not a sun on the outside, but yeah. maybe a planet. Yeah. Okay. But like again, the nemesis, sort of, right? Sort of the same idea that there's something big out there that's causing these things to be pulled in that direction. I- I'm a firm believer that Pluto is still planet nine. Oh. Because I never boy. let them go. Our boy Pluto. You're my boy Pluto. Um, when Ceres, I think it's Ceres, C E R E S, the largest asteroid in the solar system was discovered in 1801. It was initially classified as a planet, but later downgraded. Now downgraded. Pluto 2 was admitted to the Planet Club upon its discovery in 1930, only to have been asked to leave in 2006 Damn. and relegated to dwarf planet status. Damn. Yeah. Fuck, dude, we did Pluto so dirty. Yeah, there went my childhood. That was my favorite planet. Oh, he really was. Sucks, dude. I liked him. Hey, uh, I know you've been part of our thing here for like a million years, but... Get out. Please leave. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, Pluto. The Us first... <laughs> The first clues that there is yet another member of the sun's planetary fraternity came in 2014. <laughs> it's a frat? Yeah, we in a frat. Damn, what's Into, initiation? I'm, Julian, this Woo! is from sciencefocus.com, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to focus here. I'm just hyped to be in a frat, baby. Um, <laughs> it's hard to pay attention. Um, stop. In 2014, when American astronomer Dr. Scott Shepard found a small dwarf planet candidate called 2012 VP113, orbiting on an average of 250 times further from the sun than the Earth. Its elongated orbit, which is significantly tilted relative to that of the other planets, immediately stood out. Nothing is currently known in the solar system that could create its orbit. While a few unusually aligned objects could be dismissed as an unlikely coincidence, now a total of 10 have been discovered, largely thanks to work by astronomer Dr. Mike Brown and Dr. Constantine Batygin at the California Institute of Technology. With all of these objects sharing similar orbital properties, the chances of their alignment being a fluke drops to just 0.0001%. Wow, that's low. The leading explanation is that there is an otherwise unseen planet hurting these objects with its gravity. Shepard was 60% sure a ninth... 60% sure... (laughs) What? How did you... A ninth planet existed back when he found 2012 VP113. Now he says he's 85% certain. Yet, for the planet to be acting in this way, it would have to be 10 times more massive than the Earth, take at least 10,000 years to orbit the sun, and sit over 200 times further out than our planet. This enormous distance makes hunting it down and photographing it tricky. Right? Yeah. For us to see Planet 9, 
light has to trek all the way out there from the sun and almost all the way back again, fading all the while. But astronomers have been able to narrow the search using several clear shortcuts. For example, data from the Cassini mission to Saturn was used to rule out parts of of the outer solar, solar system. If Planet Nine was in those areas, then the probe would have picked them up or they would have picked up small gravitational yeah, yeah. discrepancies. <clears throat> there was a small setback in September 2018 when new research showed that another technique for ruling out parts of the sky wasn't feasible, but the hunt goes on. So far, we have covered about 30% of the prime area the planet could be in. It will take about another four years to cover the rest. Only four years? Four years. We're close then. We're, we're very close. We're like right there. We should check back. What do you think? I am very interested in this. I'm invested. Right? I think it's interesting, the concept of like <clears throat> everything adding up in terms of this theory of it being there, but the the fact that light fades at that distance, like there's no confirmation of it. That's crazy to me. Fun, right? It hurts my head a little bit. That's Isn't why that I have fun? this hat on. It is fun. Imagine light fading because you're traveling so far of a distance. Fun. Damn, that's interesting. It is fun, it right? Is fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just hope it's Nemesis. I mean, it'd be cool if it was Planet Nine, but I'm I'm really hoping for a Nemesis sun. A Nemesis would be really cool. Right? Imagine if we had two suns. We could vacation like way out there and take and get a, a, a tan from Nemesis. A Nemesis tan. You just turn blue everywhere. Why would you turn blue? Because it's infrared. So infrared light makes your skin blue. Very blue. Cite your sources. (laughs) (laughs) Space.com. Nice, Julian. Thanks. Um, You know what else is blue? What? Me undies. If you choose a blue pair of me undies. Me undies (laughs) is three times softer than cotton, and it doesn't fade like light fades when it's traveling to Nemesis and or Planet Nine and back. Mm -hmm. Me undies lasts. They last long, and they're very comfortable. They make blue, green, purple designs. Anything you want. They have underwear. They have socks. They have the most comfortable onesies on planet Earth or also Nemesis. I don't think Nemesis has anything more comfortable than MeUndies. Um, my source is space.com. Julian. So if you buy MeUndies now, there's a chance that you might be more comfortable than anything on Nemesis currently. <laughs> I'm 90% sure. I'm 60% sure of that. 60%, 60% sure of it. And if you don't believe me, go to space.com. Actually, just go to meundies.com slash Jen and Julian, and you get 15% off your first order uh, purchase of an underwear or a double pair of underwear for you and your special someone who both want to be more comfortable than anything on Nemesis or Planet Nine. I'm 60% sure you will. So <laughs> hit the link down below and get started with MeUndies. You won't go back to regular underwear afterwards. Also, guys... I don't think they, you can post these things from Nemesis, <laughs> but I'm not. I'll, I'm also not sure that you can't post mates things from Nemesis because you You're know sixty percent. I'm sixty percent sure you might be able to post mates to Nemesis. So depends on what kind of restaurants they have, or there's just a restaurant named Nemesis. In which case, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't eat there because it sounds like why would you name a restaurant Nemesis? Is it just like a really spiteful chef that got kicked out from another Maybe. restaurant and then he's like, I'm going to start a restaurant called Nemesis. It's all you of dick. all of my nemesis's uh, recipes. Nemesis, but upside down and backwards. You know what his name is? What? Mr. Kuiper. <laughs> Don't say Kuiper. <laughs> yeah, Postmates is a delivery app that makes getting your favorite foods from your favorite restaurants easily brought to your front door. It is so seamless. We use it all the time. Whether we're ordering lunch, dinner, or even just some ingredients that we need from the store, but we don't feel like running out, or we can't run out since we work from home. So. Check it out. Download the Postmates app in the App Store. Use code Jenna Julian. You get $110 of free delivery credits for your first seven days when you use that code. Uh, I'm telling you, it is the best delivery app, and you will not want to switch to anything, and you will not want to get in your car and go to the grocery store or pick up takeout food ever again because it makes it so easy. So check it out. Hit the link down below or enter code Jenna Julian into your Postmates. The end. <clears throat> right? I'm trying to figure out how to say this so we can end this. Kuiper belt. Oh. Kuiper. Kuiper. Kuiper belt. <laughs> Kuiper belt. <laughs> oh, you were way off. 
Well, why is there a U then? You know what I mean? Kuiper belt. Kuiper. Kuiper. Kuiper belt. Kuiper. I think it's her accent. She sounds like she's Kuiper from belt. Nemesis. Kuiper. She has that Nemesis accent. Okay. What we're not going to do is call people Nemesis <laughs> accents. <laughs> All right. Hold Julie- on. Hold on. Can I- Meh. There you go. It Thank was just you. a little off. All right. Hit me. Here's a quick one. Okay. A little one. Quickie. This is from LiveScience.com. <laughs> <laughs> These sources just get better and better, baby. What's better than a moon? Two moons. A moon orbiting a moon, <laughs> which the internet has dubbed a moon moon. A moon. <laughs> also known as sub moons, moony toast, grand moons, moonets, and moons. <laughs> How many zeros? <laughs> One, O's? two, three, four O's. Four O's. Moon. Moon moons are still only theoretical, but recent calculations suggest that there's nothing impossible about their formation. See, if you don't believe that, they recently calculated it, so you're wrong. Julian. They're 60% sure we're that just, calculations are we're, right. <laughs> we're not going to disrespect people that make calculations. I am, I am. Actually, I am going to disrespect people that make calculations. I'm going to do that. Also, I'm going to start a new website called I promise this is science.com. <laughs> I think that'll be your next source. <laughs> I swear it's science.com. <laughs> Should I see if that exists? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm, here we go. No. I swear. <laughs> it's science. I swear. It's apostrophe? No. No. It's science.com. Uh, dot org. Okay. There's definitely not one. Dot org. Oh, definitely not, not I think one. your computer's hacked. It should be working. Mm-hmm. Okay. Anyways, do you like the idea of moon moons? I like, I, um, what was, moonitos. That's my favorite. Moonitos. Yeah, I like moonitos. But actually that doesn't make sense because... Isn't Ito in Spanish like a smaller thing? Mm-hmm. Uh, so is the moon, is the mini moon? Yeah, the mini, mini moon is the moonito. Oh, got it. It is a mini moon. So it's not an identical twin. I like moon moon and I like moon. With four O's. Yeah. <laughs> I like moon too. Moon. It's really easy to say. But like what if our moon had a tiny little moon orbiting it? So would that affect like the weather and stuff on the moon well i mean i think we'll get there later about having two moons but yeah it would affect because the moon affects our weather well the the moon doesn't have an atmosphere right so it doesn't have weather that's true it's just pretty much space right yeah yeah so it wouldn't affect the weather on moon well (laughs) i don't know say you build a sand castle on the moon and then the moon (laughs) comes around and it's like and it destroys the sand castle and then the moon. The moon. <laughs> or you're eating cheese. The moon's made of cheese. So if you're eating cheese, maybe the moon <laughs> <laughs> makes the cheese taste different. The cheese hits different on the moon when the moon's around. <laughs> I'm 60% sure, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 60% sure. Story and then the moon comes into the story. Imagine giving like a lecture <laughs> to like students and you're like, yeah. Your and TED then talk. The moon. <laughs> you don't even like break. You're just like <laughs> moon. You know, t- tell us a story, like a a story about the moon and the moon. Okay, well, there was one night that... The Wait, ca- hold on, time yeah. out. Okay. What if it's spelled M-O-O, but there's a fucking apostrophe or what's the... On the accent. Accent. On the second on O. The sec- moon. So, there was one night uh-huh. when a cow jumped over the moon. <laughs> and as he jumped over the moon, the moon <laughs> rotated around the cow who's going moo over the moon. And as the moon passed by, no, moon. the cow got moon. Moon. The cow went moo. But the because the moon was there, moon. moon uh, it elevated the cow further off of the surface of the moon. So that at that point, the cow was actually jumping over the moon, <laughs> not the moon. The moon. Yes. And act, since the moon is so small, 
the cow's bigger than the moon, much smaller than the moon. And then you have a situation where the cow is circling the moon and then the cow is part of the moon. So circling and rotating around our moon is a cow jumping over the moon in a perpetual state forever. That's incredible. It's just swinging and swinging. Wow. The end. Amazing. We should write that as a children's book and just make it mad fucking confusing. <laughs> so the kids are like, Mommy, Mama. what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Mommy, can you read me a bedtime story? Yeah, how about the cow jumped over the moon? No, I want to read about the moon. The moon. Okay. Let's move on. You know, as fascinating as that was, Julian, <sighs> we should move on. Speaking of moons. <laughs> <laughs> Here, there's a theory yeah. that maybe our moon hasn't always been one moon. Oh, wow. That it was multiple moons, two moons, three moons. Four um, moons? Maybe. Five moons? This is, from, this is from the show. Six moons? Okay, Julian. I mean, crazy. Please. Seven moons? Please stop counting That's just moons. crazy. Eight moons? Stop counting moons, please. Okay, hear me out. Nine moons? That's just... Moon. 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 Moon, moon. Moon Moonito. <laughs> moon. Moon. Noom. Noom. Ooh. Ooh. Uh. <laughs> Last one's just... Uh. Um, I'm going to change my name. <laughs> I'm going to change my name. <laughs> I'm gonna change. I'm gonna change my name. You know, like the writer, like R. L. Stein. I'm gonna change my name to I. Dot M. Like R. L. But I am scientist, and I'm gonna write a book on the moon, written by I am scientist. <laughs> I am. Stop it! <laughs> I, I, I am scientist. The way you just called one moon m and then. Uh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to pr- be respectful of the pronunciations of our completely fictitious million moons. <laughs> okay. I'm <coughs> crying. Julian. Yeah. Uh, this is directly from the show, NASA's Unexplained Files. Great show, by the way. Like, I, super. I really like it. Yeah. Uh, there's been reports throughout history, like uh, the Romans marching into battle, uh, of seeing two moons in our sky. Yeah, how okay. is that possible? We know it's not. Ha- it would not have been possible for there to be two moons during the Roman Empire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But is it possible yeah. in theory uh-huh. at one point during our Earth's history that there was more than one moon? And there's no like other celestial body big enough for people to mistake it for the moon. Even when Mars is its closest in its orbit to the Earth, it's not even it's close. N- to yeah, the no size one of would moon. be yeah. like, oh, that's another, that's another yeah. moon. Yeah. Um, but we are unusual in that we only have one moon. Like Jupiter, Jupiter and Saturn have 60 moons. And a lot of them are weirdo. Like moon. M- uh, m- uh. D- uh. <laughs> Do weird stuff. Um, the data suggests that Earth at one time was hit with an object the size of Mars. And that the debris coalesced. Mars is kind of big. Mars is big. Mars has been hitting the gym a little bit getting big the debris yeah coalesced into an object that formed the moon okay but we don't know if it all coalesced at once into one moon what if it coalesced into two moons? where the moon been then or three moons where they been then to m- and ooh. oh they're just, they're there but they're just not there but now we only have one moon i do agree with one part of that what sentence or kind of bunch of sentences would be a paragraph, I assume. We are unusual. That's all. That's what okay. I agree with. Thank you, Julian. Isn't it a cool idea, though, of the debris that formed from that impact forming multiple moons that then coalesced into our moon, which would explain why one side of the moon has a very different crust than the other side of the moon? I like how you use the word crust. Julian? 
What? Let's not talk about sandwiches. I know. Okay. Or pizza, maybe. Okay. Okay. So the, the, what I, just to kind of explain this to me like I'm five, you have a ball of cheese and you throw it at a big hard ball and it blows up and it explodes into a million pieces of cheese. Not a million pieces. Whatever. Oh, hold on. Hold on. A million pieces of cheese. Of those million pieces, there's one pretty big piece and then there's a couple like smaller pieces. That is what you're just saying. The big piece is the moon that we know, and then the little ones are like no. little baby moons. Well, maybe. Or the, all of them are baby moons, and maybe. the moon was already there. So if the Earth yeah. and something the size of Mars okay. impacted with each other, yeah. you'd have a lot of debris. Yes. And some of it would be chunks, some of it would be small, some of it would probably be pretty big. Uh-huh. As it's spinning around the Earth that still, you know, lived and remained intact, yeah, yeah. sort of, I guess, or we became, par- I don't know, whatever. There's pieces that, because they're floating around the gravitational pull, they get smushed together and, you know, create a sphere and create a ball like the moon because of the gravity. You know what I mean? So is it possible that at one point, like maybe multiple things coalesced? Into moons, and then those look at yeah. those two things smashed in with each other and, and made they one moon. Yeah, I think that's. I mean, I think that's possible as long as like for a moon to be a moon, does it need to be comprised of something specific, or can anything like with a gravitational orbit? I'm too dumb to answer that because whatever Mars was made of, or something that's not Mars, that's something the size of Mars was made of, is going to determine if it has. On a on a molecular level, because I'm a scientist with a tinfoil hat, if this can actually be classified as a moon, right? Like it has to be made of something specific. It can't just be any. I don't know the answer to that. I, that's just my first question. But I, I I completely hear the theory. It's interesting as fuck. Well, so if we had two moons at one point, yeah. all the gravity on Earth, like the, not the gravity, but like we would have tidal waves and yeah. storms and all kinds of stuff because yeah. all of our you know water and stuff is being pulled sure, everywhere. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd be pretty crazy here. But lucky for us, my dude, we mm. only have one moon. One moon. One love. What? One moon. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, if the weather were to start just going off the rails out of nowhere, people would be like, well, what's going on? There must be a second moon. Well, if it was going off the rails because we had a second moon, it would be like... People wouldn't be talking about it. We'd be dying. What? How? How die? How die? <laughs> That's not a like sentence. tidal waves, tsunamis, huge storms, like really, really That's bad. That's what I mean. Like stuff. if the weather had a crazy shift, and we were like, it would. Yeah, it's dangerous. People would die. But I'm saying, like, it would. The first thought would be like, damn, there must be a second moon, or the first no. moon's gone crazy. No, there wouldn't be any thoughts. We we would be in a. We would all die? It would be apocalypse? Maybe not apocalypse, but like really, really bad disasters. <laughs> okay. Okay. What? Are you ready to move on? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what? Apocalypse. Cute. Lips. Julian. Yeah. Have you ever heard of a black hole? Cut. Yeah. Yeah. Is this on? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of a black hole. Have you ever heard of a white hole? (laughs) Why does that sound so weird? (laughs) A white hole. (laughs) A white hole. No. Okay. Here's one that you girl is genuinely too dumb to explain like okay. i watched like three youtube videos and i'm telling you i am too dumb to explain what the hell is going okay. on all right that's fine i watched videos that made me feel like the dumbest person on the planet i like feeling dumb yeah, yeah. i mean watch a video about a white hole if you really just want to be humbled into some stupid okay because that's what that makes me feel like this is from wikipedia okay so don't ask me to explain it because i literally fucking can't okay a Could white you explain it? Julie. <laughs> <laughs> a white hole is a hypothetical region of space-time in singularity which cannot be entered from the outside. 
although energy matter and light can escape from it. In this sense, it is the reverse of a black hole, which can be entered only from the outside and from which energy and matter and light cannot escape. White holes appear in the theory of external black holes. In addition to a black hole region in the future, which such a solution of the Einstein field equations has a white hole region in the past. Stay with me. <laughs> However, some believe this region does not exist for black holes and that have formed through gravitational collapse, nor are there any known physical processes through which a white hole could be formed. Supermassive black holes are theoretically predicted to be at the center of every galaxy, and that possibly a galaxy can't exist without one. It's been proposed by Stephen Hawking that these supermassive black holes spawn with supermassive white holes slash Big Bang birth of a new universe. Big Bang birth, band name called it. Julian, <laughs> certain formulations even suggest that white holes have an event horizon in the past while a black hole has an event horizon in the future. If correct, white holes would be time-reversed black holes from which particles can only escape and never return. We haven't seen one, and it's inconclusive because we don't really know what we're looking for, but some cosmologists believe the Big Bang could have been a white hole spitting out information from another universe to our own. Okay, that sentence alone justifies our hats. <laughs> That, what you just said out of your mouth. That is why we're wearing these hats. I have a question. If you're a teacher, I'm the student here. I don't Professor, think I have, I have an a answer. Question. If we were to make a Venn diagram of black holes and white holes, what would we find in the middle? This is not a riddle. I'm just trying to shed light on like what, like what the similarities between the two would be. Is it like a, there's a void of something in a black hole and a white hole, right? They just... Well, so the YouTube video that I watched, I'm t I'm lit. I do not know how to answer your question That's fine. without That's fine. like I'm just I'm sort of just talking telling to you too. that I'm, I'm just... probably terribly wrong because I am too dumb to explain it. That's fine. I was I was because just sort I of don't hypothetical. fully even understand what they're talking about. Yeah, that's I get it. But the YouTube video that I watched basically showed a, a black hole here, mm -hmm. and the very edge of it is the event horizon. Okay. And time and space would act very differently as you're passing through it. Weird. Fucking weird. Yeah. Well, and it, I, I'm too dumb. That's fine. I'm just too dumb. That's but fine. that's what the event horizon is that they're okay. referring to, is okay. like the passage of when you actually go into it. Okay. I think what they have in common is that they're a, a supermassive black hole or a black hole, I think they describe as what happens when the the nucleus or whatever of a planet like it actually dies and then like implodes creates or the black hole that yeah then that's right yeah, yeah because yeah. my idea of a black hole is something that sucks everything into it not even the light can escape yeah but the reverse of that is this white hole where things can only be like expelled from it but i don't i don't think it's like what your brain wants to do is mm -hmm. think that a black hole goes this way and on mm -hmm. the other side of it is a white hole that spews it out somewhere Yeah, because that's what makes sense. Yeah. But it's not that, I don't think. What's crazy, like what if the the event, event horizon is is like sort of like the universal, it's like a clock, right? Like so anytime something interacts with the event horizon in a white hole, it doesn't go physically anywhere, but instead it's like propelled into a different dimension or time period. Yeah, I have no idea. This whole thing about the like infinite future and infinite past like really fucks with me. Yeah. Because I watched this video where they have a a graph basically yeah, yeah. and we're in the middle of it uh -huh. and it's pointed like a square. Yeah. But tilted so it's a diamond yeah and there's infinite future and infinite past uh -huh. and like the singularity is the side and uh -huh. if you flip it over then it's space time that is and totally we're, we're different. in the middle yeah, yeah but like it's really difficult to fathom for sure unless you understood this on like some type of mathematical scale which for sure i actually kind of want to watch that too dumb to understand yeah but it's really cool. And the idea of an infinite future and an infinite past is really hard to understand or grasp or 
make any sense of and the same with space and time and absolutely i think the space time conversation and white holes and things like that like that to me is one of the most interesting things that you can even just like let your brain go wild and think about yeah because there are literally infinite possibilities for different ex- planes of existence that have time similar to the one we're experiencing and like things like white holes just expand that idea. Well, even yeah, more. the the way that this graph, what if I think, yeah, I'm too dumb to stop saying this. you're too dumb. No, you're not I'm a not. scientist. That's fine. It's okay. I think what he was saying on the singularity part is that at some point there's a period where time acts like space and space acts like time. What the fuck? Yeah, man. <laughs> it's just really like it's. <laughs> Grasp your hat. I think there's a Mumble. hole in my hat. Marble, Marble you got to put this Marble, on. Marble, put it on. You got to put it on, okay? Oh, buddy. Oh, chicken. There you go, honey. There you go, bud. Oh, Bob, we got to protect gotta you, Got to protect Bob. them. Damn, dude. I mean, that is so fucking crazy. Yeah, but I I don't understand it. And That's I do fine. think that if, if you're interested, that there's fun stuff you could watch from people far more qualified that have a lot better information than what I just said, which is only sure. from Wikipedia. But and that there is, in the yeah, math, yeah, in theory, yeah. black holes that we kind of, in the people in science, agree exist or uh-huh. probably exist. Yeah. And, you know, that girl took a photograph of one recently, right? That picture yeah, that went viral, yeah, super cool. Yeah, yeah. So we, we agree black holes exist, and we think we understand somewhat how they act a little bit and that light can't even escape yeah. them. And I think I had, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know anything, but I think that it's been theorized or like heavily supported that a black hole sucks in stuff and that it doesn't go anywhere else. Yeah, it just stays that there. That it disappears. Yeah, or what, or disappears from us. Or from where it was, but it goes into the black hole, which means who knows. Well, I think that it it's been theoretically shown yeah. that it doesn't go anywhere else. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. That it's not like oh, it comes out the other side and goes to this place. It's gone. It's that like it's in gone. There. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So when I heard a white hole, I was like, oh, bitch. So it's <laughs> spitting out shit from a black hole yeah. because it that makes sense, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what no. your brain wants to do, but it's not. It's not. Yeah, that's fucking wild, dude. Fun, though, right? That one's really fun. That one's my favorite one so far. But like that, the, it just, it blows my mind. But in the, in the theory, the math shows uh-huh. that if a black hole exists, that also there would be this white hole that yeah. is the mirror opposite, both in the, the space time of it and its properties of how it, things can only go this way. Yeah, yeah, how it interacts with things. It's fucking crazy, dude. Certain formulations even suggest that white holes have an event horizon in the past where a black hole has an event horizon in the future. If correct, white holes would be time-reversed black holes from which particles can only escape and never return. It would like propel. So fuck. A reverse event horizon. So with a white hole, you you're thrusted back into the space time continuum backwards, and with a black hole, theoretically you'd be thrusted the other way. Yeah, I don't know. That's still insane. But yeah, if you're interested in that, there's some good stuff you could read or watch about Shit, it's it. It's crazy I can't, to think I can't, about. I literally can't explain it. Yeah, my brain is like. It's really working. All three of my brain cells working pretty hard right now. And I'm keeping them in here. They're trying to <laughs> they, leave. They ain't going anywhere. But I have tinfoiled them in here. Y'all bitches thought you could leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Do you want one more that's like <coughs> fun and not not heavy and it won't hurt your brain yeah, like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of a mystery, but not really. Okay. Uh, that Saturn has a moon that looks just like the Death Star. No shit. Do you want to know what it's called? Kermit's crying. What? Nemus. It's called Samoth. No, I'm kidding. It's called Nemus? Yeah, it's called Nemus. NASA's Cassini probe was orbiting 31,000 miles above Saturn's atmosphere and was looking at Nemus, which is one of Saturn's moons. It's made mostly of rock and waterites and it's almost uh, about 250 miles across, which is like 
not very far. 250 miles. That's like from... You can drive that in a car. You can drive that in a car. Yeah. I've driven that in a car. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has one side that literally looks like the Death Star. With like that chunk taken Crater, out of it. Yeah. yeah. Do you want me to show you a picture of it? Of the Death Star? No. Yeah, I want to see the Death Star. Julian? Are you going to science.com? No. I don't know why I'm like on this. Where's Nemus? Jenna uses Bing. No, I don't. I like got stuck on this. <laughs> Look at how many moons. Oh, Look at we got Titan. Mimus. Rhea. Mimus. No, that's Mimus. Mimus. Wait. Me Mimus. Oh, maybe it is Mimus. That one looks like the dust star. I thought they were saying Mimus. They were saying Mimus. Hi, Kermit. Yeah, it's Mimus. M I M. It actually looks like Mimus. a nipple. Julian. What? It looks like a nipple. Look at Mimus. Guys, look up Mimus. It doesn't look like... Wait. Oh, this is so fun. They should make a reality show of all Saturn's moons. We got Mimus, uh, Iptis, Dion, take this, Phoebe, Phoebe, Hyperion, Prometheus, Pan, Epitheus, Pandora. Oh, Pandora is pretty. Uh, Janus. Janus. S, 2009S1, which is a bunch of lines. Calypso, Telesto, Helene, Methone, Daphne. Why, why are some named like Atlas, Helene and some are 01501111? This boy's name is Polly Deuces, so. <laughs> okay, so for the naming committee, they clearly have a couple of different people who work on that committee. Maybe with different backgrounds, some science, some the opposite of science. Ooh, Pan looks really cool. Look at Pan. Or Pan. 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 He's a walnut-shaped moon. He's cute. Look at it. Wow. I like Pan. Aren't they cute? Look at all these this moons. This is actually fun to look at Saturn's different moons. Oh, look at all these moons. Look at all these at all chicken these moons. moons. Okay. Anyways. Um... Uh, the Cassini probe basically picked up that it was vibrating or wobbling as it goes through space, mm -hmm. which most things don't usually do. Uh, it has a crater on one side. Yeah. That We're looks talking about like Mimus, right? Mimus. Yeah. Mimus. Um, the crater is so big compared to the size of the moon that if it were on Earth, it would be equivalent to the size of Australia. The crater. The crater. Wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a big boy. It's a crater, mate. Yeah, but it's also theorized that if something were to actually crash into it mm -hmm. to cause that crater, that because it's so small, it should have broken it apart. Well, why did right? it not break? But that it could have also compacted it even more. Huh. But that they call it... a. Uh, an anomaly. That's crazy. It actually looks a little bit like the Death Star. It looks like a big nipple, mm -hmm. but it doesn't look normal. It doesn't look like how you think. Because like with craters a, on the moon, they're all tiny. A mass anomaly. Um, Me after I eat a large pizza, I'm, I'm a mass anomaly. The math doesn't entirely add up though okay. for it to be a mass anomaly. So they've also theorized that maybe there's something inside the moon creating it. Like sucking the surface in or something? Well, let me tell you. The the other, uh, one of the other moons of Saturn, Enceladus, Encel, Encel, Enceladus, Enceladus, I think that's how you say it, Enceladus, which is another moon, has a similar wobble, which has massive geysers beneath the surface, which give it a sloshing around action, sort of. So it's water. So it doesn't look like it's like a... No, 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 no. The top is ice. Yeah. And underneath that surface is water that Got has it. geysers that's sort of sloshing around. Got it. Inside of it, which is giving it a wobble. Got it. A little bit of a wobble. That's what could justify the movement, the vibration. So maybe the same thing is happening on Mimis, they're suggesting, but it's almost a billion miles from the sun. So in order to have liquid water that far from the sun, because otherwise it would be ice, uh -huh. it, there has to be some type of heat source or like a thermal activity happening inside, inside the moon. Inside the Mimus. Inside the Mimus. What the heck? A moon with thermal activity creating liquid water is really fun, right? Yeah, that's crazy. A billion miles from the sun? A billion miles from the sun. You know, when you used to wake up early for class and you used to shower in the morning, you used to get out and it was really cold. That's how it felt. Mm -hmm. You were a billion miles from the sun. 
But they would expect to see some thermal activity or like a geological activity, like a volcano. You know, I have a like question. I don't, I don't know if I have an answer. Can I just finish? The orbit is weird, though, too. If it did have liquid, eventually it would orbit Saturn in a very circular pattern because of the water, mm. according to these people. As opposed to like I'm an dumb. oval pattern. Okay. But it has an elliptical orbit. Why? We don't know, Beach. It, so it's going through space like this in an elliptical orbit and acting like maybe it might have water in it, but doesn't really act like a celestial body with water in I it. I think it's so interesting to think about the fact that there might be water in something a billion miles from the sun and what the fuck that's about. Because obviously the vibration can be explained by many different outcomes, right? Like it doesn't, water's not the only, obviously, there's probably a lot of theories, right? You can nod when, Right. I don't understand. Like there's the, you're saying the only theory as to why this thing is vibrating is that there's water in it or there's multiple theories. No, they don't, they don't know that. That's what I'm saying. Like there's kind of other potential theories that, that might not explain, that might explain the vibration without water being the answer or whatever. I just think that is the most interesting route to go down. Right. Because like you said, where is the energy source coming from? And why is it not rotating in a perfect circle? Well, yeah, I mean, they're only theorizing that maybe it has water because yeah. one of the other moons of Saturn acts like that and yeah. has that. Yeah. But it also has the geological activity. So they, there is probably a heat source inside mm-hmm. of it creating some of the liquid water. Mm-hmm. But that's why he just goes like this and he looks like the Death Star and his name is Mimas. I like Mimas. Isn't he cute? He's cute. Yeah. I still would really like a reality show with all of Saturn's moons. You want to look at Jupiter's moons? Jupiter's moons. Isn't one of them Io? Io? Pretty sure. (gasps) Moons of Jupiter. Wikipedia. Fun. What are their names? Tell us their names. We want to know them. Yeah, it's definitely Io. Europa. Oh, I think, isn't Io the one that like does crazy stuff? I think he does. Callisto, cute. Okay. Yeah, sulfur dioxide frost. Whoa, fun. Good times. Am I right? Uh, That is good times. Okay, sorry. No, that's fine. I think I would watch that show probably if it was a reality show. (laughs) (laughs) They all just have like different faces and names. Their names out. are accurate, but they're just like different characters based on those names. Or it's just a static shot of all of them floating in space, and then it just cuts to commercial. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. I would watch that too. Well, thank you for providing this incredibly stimulating podcast thank of you. information and theories and just conversations. It was very fun. And my brain feels protected because I've been wearing my tinfoil hat. So Good, shouts out to tinfoil. You know, you can post me some right now. I'm glad you were protected, Marble. Marble was protected for maybe like a quarter of the podcast. Nemesis. 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 Those are good theories, though. Right? It's fun. Yeah, those were fun. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. I hope you guys enjoy. Oh. <gasps> Peach. <laughs> she just bumped her head. Peach. Oh, honey. Peachy. Why did you do that, Peach? She just headbutted my mic. Oh, Peachy. Oh, baby. You have a hard head, don't you? You barely felt it. <laughs> Why did you do that? Because she lives life like her daddy. Oh she just goes God. full force and rams into things. <laughs> Good girl. Yeah, that's a good girl. Uh, Well, thank you guys for listening and hanging with us. I hope you had your tinfoil hat on and enjoyed it. If you had your tinfoil hat on while you listen to this podcast, tweet us a picture of you listening to the podcast with your tinfoil hat on at Jen and Julian because I want to retweet them or something. I don't know. We're tinfoiling it out here. So, you know, you know, just do it to them. Do it to them. Hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you on Twitch all week. We're going to be live all week long, and we'll see you on the next podcast. Bye. Bye.